Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I try to build my own productivity app slash video game. If that sounds like a product that you'd be interested in, go ahead and click the link in my description to sign up for my mailing list and I can send you an email when the product is ready for its first round of testing. But I'm back again to show the updates that I have so far here. And in my last video, I talked a lot about switching scenes in Godot. And in this video, I have an update on that, so I'm gonna show you right now. So here we are in the video game section of the app. And in my last video, I talked about switching scenes. So if you go over here and go to the right, you will load a new scene. And I talked about how I was doing that. But something I crucially left out in the last video was that when you go to new scenes, you don't always go to the same direction. If you're building a world, you need to uh, be able to enter one side of the map and exit another side of the map and be able to go back and forth. So I had to update the function that I was using to handle how the scenes were changing so that the player could spawn in the correct position every time. If you recall in the map that I was just showing you here, we started right in the middle. But if I go back to that map here, my player now spawns in the correct position over here on the right side of the map. But if I were to encounter a game over screen, which I can trigger by dying to these bat enemies here, I've got my game over screen and I can press space to restart now. You'll see that I start in the middle of this map regularly. But if I were to go back and forth between uh, these two levels, I always spawn in the correct position over here. So how am I doing that? Let me show you. So I had to modify the function um, for handling how levels were changed to include another argument. And that argument is called spawn location. So I have a generalized scene that I can drag and drop into any Godot map sort of scene that I've created here. Uh, it's called world. And then I have a template called level manager that I drop onto each map that I'm creating. And in that level manager script, which we were just looking at it, it's a, a node 2D. We're creating a signal for level changed and it takes in a scene to load. And we're also defining a function uh, for handle level changed. It takes in a map to load and a spawn location and it emits a signal for level changed and it takes in the map to load and the spawn location. I wonder if this needs to be changed. I don't think it does. I think this is right. But this is the signal that this is calling. Uh, it's working, but maybe it's better to add, what, spawn location here? I don't know. Either way, this works. And then in the on ready for this function, I am connecting to any um, right exits or left exits that happen to be children of this level manager. However, I think that this could be improved instead of trying to get right exit and left exit. Specifically, you could map over all of the children and just connect to any children nodes in that level manager. You could also create a group of nodes and use that and just map over that group of nodes and connect. And that's probably what I will do. That's probably the best way to handle it. But I mentioned that I had to add an argument here on this handle level change function. I also had to add an argument on my scene switcher function. So that function, which also handles the level change, um, now takes in a spawn location as well. And if the spawn location, which by default is equal to default, is not default, sorry for the confusing logic there, um, we're going to basically add it to this string where we're going to, on line 21, get the next level. We're gonna get a node at underneath the level manager. We're going to grab the spawn location. And then we're going to set the camera position to the player spawn position and the player position to the player spawn position. And that's pretty much it. You might also notice that there is a new settings gear at the top right corner of my game. When I hover over it, it turns yellow, which indicates to the user that they're able to click it. When you do click it, it brings up our new settings menu, which is great because I think as people start to play test this, they're going to want to be able to change things in the settings, like their audio levels or their key bindings. And I think that that's just table stakes to have when you're making a game. However, I felt like I needed this immediately because I need to test saving the game state with the database online. And my initial plan for that was to happen every time that you get attacked by a monster or every time you change levels, basically anytime you take damage or that the game state literally changes, I would update the game state on the server. 
but I think that that's going to be a like shitload of database calls. And instead of doing that right off of the rip, I'm going to just take the dumb approach and put a save game button. And if people die, they will load the last saved game. If they want to save their progress before quitting, they can do so. It's, it's here. It's just like Zelda. And we'll see how it does. But experimenting with that taught me a lot about how I'm going to interact with Godot in my React.js project. So basically, I'm attaching the function to update the state on the server, aka the database, to the window object itself, along with my quit game function. So I'll be able to redirect when the player chooses to quit game, they'll be redirected to the dashboard of the application. And if they save game, that'll just update the database and probably close the menu here. But there's a lot of work left to be done on that. I'm just, this is the progress I have so far, and I want to give you an honest update. All right, that's all I have for today. Uh, there's a lot of changes going on behind the scenes. I'm doing my best to try to get a playable demo of this done by the end of the month. And if uh, you're following along, it is currently early January right now when I'm filming this. And uh, that's a lot of work to get done. So I'm going to get back to work, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, bye.